guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're watching episode eight of Wednesday. It's the last one. It's the season finale. Excited, but also torn because I have been loving this series. I've been loving the humor. I've been loving the darkness of it. I've been loving the tragedy. I've been loving just everything about it. It's encapsulated so many different views and, and, and expectations and characters and the people that are in it are so vastly different. Like, like Enid and Wednesday, even though they're so different, they still work together very well. I love it. I love their friendship. That's, it's got a ways to go. I love that it's blooming. I love that it is what it is and that it's not something that it's not. Like, that they didn't just become besties and personalities change. Like, they still very much are who they are. And I love that about them. I love that about them. And they're, 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 they're being accepting of each other. This is what you get when you have this person in your life. And coming fresh off of the last episode, I I am still very uh, high on my... I still, like... I don't know how we get Xavier out of jail. Obviously, the monster is Tyler, and Tyler's dad is the guy that runs the place. So I, I he has to be aware of his son. He has to be aware of what happened he has to be aware of like who he is and i'm really wondering what happened to tyler's mom tyler being a hide i think the mother had to have known something about that was the mother an outcast you know like look what who's his mom i really feel like you know she's the key to really understanding that whole situation between him and his father and the monster and and how he could grow up that close you know in jericho by nevermore but never never go to Nevermore, never be considered for Nevermore. I know that, like, Nevermore had banned hides, but I feel like having one that you could at least tame and teach and maybe, you know, help get through it, it'd be great. I mean, that might be me thinking a little too highly about a school, like it could do all that magic. I mean, it does a lot of magic. It should be able to do it, I would think. But yeah, after Tyler took her on that amazing date and... Then kissed her in the weather vane and she had her vision. I I think he's going, I really think he's going to be chasing after her. Um, or at least figuring out why she ran. Because, you know, her having like her, her seizing visions. I don't know if he's seen that before. I don't think he has. I'm trying to remember the times that she's had one. Like, if he was around. I don't think he was in the crypt with the birthday party. Um, he wasn't around during the boat race. He wasn't around, I guess, I guess he was around, yeah, at the dance and then also at the, the fair, the carnival thing. So maybe he would know that she was having a vision. I don't know if he would know that, that she's having a vision, just that something's wrong. Um, we have Thing on the Mend. Uh, hopefully he is, um, feisty from his, uh, stab wound more scars to add to that 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 thing's body um like i said it was really great to see wednesday emotional about thing it was really great to see that from her that she was terrified and that she was also like really sad like she she was desperately afraid that she was going to lose thing i think also it probably would have been kind of this mounting doom a little bit because she also lost enid she also lost xavier you know there's a lot of people that were in her life that like it, it maybe maybe she's not feeling that way maybe that's just me um but like you know it could have been a mounting loss that she just couldn't take it now with kinbot dead and gone as far as we know i mean we didn't see a body it was just the sheriff saying that she was dead and that she was gone uh, we didn't actually physically see her die, and with the sheriff being the father of the monster, I don't know if they're all in cahoots. So, Kinbot may very well still be alive. Um, again, I'm always throwing out Thornhill as like a maybe, especially because of the conservatory and the flowers and the whole mix of the thing. Um, she could very well be Laurel. I wonder how we're going to wrap this up, because obviously we have to solve the crimes somebody has to, I don't want to say pay for the murders, but especially Eugene. Like, Wednesday is not okay after Eugene. Um, her experiencing Eugene and now Thing, and then, you know, having having Enid go away, and you know she felt empty without Enid a little bit. Um, I, I think that getting Xavier out of jail 
and somehow getting him to forgive her <laughs> it's gonna be a tough call i don't blame him if he doesn't but at the same time like he's also got to see how coincidental a lot of the stuff going on was and how bad it made him look like if he doesn't then he's just a dummy i think with lucas and bianca also helping that they're kind of mounting a team of people um i have no doubt that ajax is going to come in handy hopefully he can stone somebody <laughs> um i i feel like he'd do that for enid and i feel like enid would you know wolf out like if she's gonna wolf out now's the time when wednesday was running away i noticed a full moon above the school so like if she's gonna do the wolf thing she needs to do it now oh god i hope oh, see anytime that these people get involved i always like uh, like I, I'm, I'm always afraid of their peril that like their demise is imminent anytime they go anywhere and and granted no one besides rowan of the school has died but like you know today could be that day very well could be that day and that's scary so now that we're kind of closing in on the story one i don't know about the courtyard scene where wednesday is fighting a pilgrim i don't know <laughs> I don't know if that scene happens and what happens with it, but I feel like there is going to be a showdown at Evermore. Uh, I feel like that's what we've been needing. That's what we, we, we've we been desiring is this fight to finally happen for Wednesday to save the school, to save Enid, to save Xavier, even Bianca. And, and I don't want Bianca to have to leave Evermore. And I feel like if Evermore closes, then Bianca's life is like just shattered. And I don't want that to happen to her. I care about her. I care about all these kids, which is wild coming from somebody who doesn't really particularly love children. <laughs> They're fine. I just don't want to push one out of my body. <laughs> and as long as they go home with their parents, it's all good. <laughs> but this has definitely been one of those shows that I feel like I, I want to say this and I don't want to sound... Um, I'm, I'm not using hyperbole, but I feel like it's a once-in-a-lifetime show to experience this show. The way we have experienced it with the writing that we have the directing the cinematography you know just even the monster itself the story is so good the music is amazing the talent that we are beholding is just amazing and i i can't praise it enough and it's one of my favorite things that i have watched this year and i've said that to a lot of things that i've watched this year and a lot of things hold a different place in my heart for sure but like this was, it's just blown me away like, I just was like, ah, it'll just be a koopy, creepy show. And like, no, it's fantastic. I We are so spoiled with some of the television that we're, we, that we're receiving this year. It has been just vast, far, and wide, and wondrous, and we are so lucky. So with that being said, let's get into it. Season finale, Wednesday. I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Getting right into it. Is this Tyler? Who is this? Yes, okay. I mean, and I was going to say too, I think Wednesday bumped into him at the dance. And that's when she saw the vision of Eugene. Dang, give me your note. So, uh, is this a date? It's a surprise. Mm. When I came to Nevermore, romance was the last thing on my mind. Probably the last thing always on her mind. But when you kissed me, you opened my eyes, and suddenly it all made sense. Savior warned me about you, but I didn't listen. Ironic now, huh? Ironic would have been framing Xavier for murder while the real hide helped me put him away. Mm. Kinbot probably discovered your secret during one of your sessions, so she unlocked you. Why'd you kill her? Wednesday, seriously, this is nuts. On outreach day, I told you I was visiting the old meeting house. <laughs> it still scared me. I knew it was coming. The night of the Raven, you overheard Eugene and me discussing your cave in the woods and you warned Kinbot. Then she sent you to clean up her mess. Wounding yourself that night at the Gates Mansion? That was a masterstroke of misdirection. Okay, stop. Do you know how insane you sound right now? I'm not a monster. And if you really thought that I was, why would you risk bringing me out to the woods to confront me alone? You said I was alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, team up. Although I fear for these children. I'm out of here. Actually, Siren, you're coming with us. Okay, okay. 
Does he know he does it? Quincy, this is crazy. I'm a normie. That's only half true. Do you recognize her? Perhaps if I hadn't been so distracted by my own mother hogging this photo, I would have noticed yours. Is this mom? Your father fell in love and married an outcast. Fine. My mom was an outcast. That doesn't make me a monster. According to her personal medical records. Wait, you stole her medical records? Oh, boy. Don't do this to him. Postpartum depression triggered her condition. My mom had severe bipolar disorder. We both know that's a lie. She was a hide. You're basing all this off some vision you had after we kissed? I mean, is that something you could trust? When's it, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? There's only one thing that a hide understands. Pain. Wait, what is this? No, don't, don't, don't leave me here with her, please. I'm begging you, please. Oh. What is this intro? Haven't gotten an intro in for forever, and now we're getting it in the last episode? When I press him on his mother or any sensitive issue, he snaps. Becoming cold and detached. It's like I'm talking to a different person. Oh, they went to her. That's smart. Hello? Sheriff Galvin, we have a problem. And her name is Wednesday Adams. <laughs> With such disdain. Let's test your reflexes. I'm in here! Get away from my oh, son! Oh. Drop it! Holy crap, you pulled a gun on a kid? What do you want? Ask a question. What does it feel like? What does what feel like? To lose. Oh, that just put chills all over my body. You know, first, I wake up naked, covered in blood. I started to remember everything. The sound of their screams, panic in their eyes, fear so primal I could taste it. You have no idea what's coming. What a great actor! Holy crap, that was amazing! Wow. The quid pro quo for Sheriff Galpin not pressing charges is your immediate expulsion from Nevermore. The others had nothing to do with this. I acted alone. As someone who claims to have no friends, you certainly go out of your way to protect them. Mm hmm Perhaps if you'd come to me with your suspicions rather than taking matters into your own hands, we could have worked together. Oh, yes, because trust and cooperation have always been the hallmarks of our relationship. <laughs> Pack your steamer trunks. We will have them shipped and say your goodbyes. You'll be on the afternoon train tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm sorry Nevermore didn't work out for you Wednesday. I'm sure your mother will be very disappointed. And so am I. Well, that's nice that she said that. Xavier, I'm not sure how much time we have. Thing distracted the guards and is looping the cameras. Look at him. Aww. I know you're not the hide. Tyler used me to frame you. He is the actual hide. How do you know? You saw it in a vision when he kissed me. I'm glad you were getting some action while I was falsely accused. Oh, shut up. I was curious to know if you've drawn anything recently that might shed some light on this you situation. You want my help? You need to get him out of there, Wednesday. I tried being your friend. Look where that got me. This isn't about us, Savior. No, it's about you! Every time you get involved, people get hurt. All you ever do is make things worse. Do you want to stop this? Then leave. Go far away and never come back. That can't happen if you're not here. That's how you save everyone, okay? He's got a point. I can't believe I'm actually going to miss your creepy, lifeless eyes waking me up every morning. Aww. It won't be the same without you. Who's she talking to? Will you forget about me? Enid. The mark you have left on me is indelible. Anytime I grow nauseous at the sight of a rainbow, I hear a pop song that makes my ears bleed. I'll think of you. <laughs> That's sweet. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> I always believed relying on other people to be a sign of weakness. That inevitably they would lead me to disappointment. Turns out I've been the disappointment. Are you kidding me? I've learned so much from you. Aww. Part of it is admittedly criminal behavior, but <laughs> most people spend their entire lives pretending to give zero Fs, and you literally never had an F to give. This prophecy cannot come true if I'm not here. 
but it kills me to leave when Tyler is still walking around free. If he tries anything, we have a school full of gorgons, vampires, and werewolves. Ready mm -hmm. and waiting. You've got this Wednesday, I promise. I got a text from Eugene's mom. He woke up yeah. last night. <gasps> Maybe Williams will let you drop by on your way to the station. Aww. He wants to go too. I'm going to miss our makeup tutorials. And you better keep sending me moisturizing tips. <laughs> Stay in touch, okay? Aww. So we're gonna... Oh. Give her the hug. You're right. Not hugging is kind of our thing. Mm. The night sheets need to be ready for what's coming. Or a lot of people are going to die. That's intense. This is a party <laughs> gift. What Oleander? One of nature's deadliest. Hmm. It also symbolizes destiny and renewal. You're a very talented young woman, Wednesday. I can't wait to see what you do next. Wednesday. This time I'm personally escorting you to your train. I, I have bet. one final favor. Oh. Glad to see you're finally awake. I heard you visited me all the time. Don't ever mention it again. <laughs> I shouldn't have gone to the dance. I should have been with you. When the dance floor calls, you have gotta answer. He's such a good friend. That night in the woods, someone set fire to that cave. Yes, Dr. Kinbot. It's so crazy that it was her. I just saw someone wearing black and those boots. What about her boots? There was an explosion of light and just for a moment, I saw that they weren't black, they were red. I love being right. Wednesday. I thought you'd be halfway to New Jersey by now. You can drop the act, Laurel. I should have known it was you. Faking your death, securing a job at Nevermore, unlocking a hide. Typically, I have great admiration for well-executed revenge plots, but yours was a bit extreme, even for my high standards. I praise. You do need psychiatric help. Can't throw out wild accusations without consequences. Tyler told me everything. Is Weem shape-shifted into Tyler? I know your father kept tabs on all the outcasts in town. So I assume he told you all about the Galvin family secret when you were just a girl. And when Kimbot came close to discovering the truth, you had Tyler kill her and pin it on Xavier. Ugh, that's enough. Tyler, honey, make Mama happy and shut her up. He's not on your side. Tyler will do anything for me. It's weems. They're just pawns in a bigger game. You were never getting on that train. I sent Tyler to intercept you. I never made it to the station. Heard enough? Love it! Please don't make this more difficult than what already is, Marilyn. My name is No! <gasps> no! Oh! Principal Weems. Oh god, I did not but Weems gonna die? Jade poisoning. A fitting end, don't you think? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> Teenagers kissing isn't super romantic, though. Are you okay? You're not gonna, like, wolf out on me, are you? Hopefully. <sighs> Eugene. Principal Weems and her went and confronted Miss Thornhill, but I haven't heard a peep from either of them. Why would they confront Miss Thornhill? Because she's behind everything that's happened. What happened? Principal uh, Weems. What the hell is going on? What about Wednesday? Tyler and Thornhill took her? Crackstone's crypt, what the heck? Who are the nightshades? Uh. Oh. And keeping a secret. <laughs> Come on. Guy? No, Eugene. Mom, I've got to go. Wednesday's my only friend, and if she's in trouble, I've got to help her. It's Hive Code. No, I love little Eugene. Oh, let this be the night that Enid just wolfs out. I can't believe Weems is dead. Kind of a deja vu thing we got going on, huh? Except I won't cry and whine like a child. Tyler. Oh. Wow. 
You know, we have roots that go all the way back to Joseph Crackstone. I figured. So you come from a line of psychotic killers too? Mm -hmm. Throughout the centuries, my family has remained committed to Crackstone's mission. My brother died serving that cause. I decided to take a different approach. Wild. The supernatural. Tyler's been collecting all of these body parts to resurrect Crackstone. What? You can't wake the dead. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> it wasn't enough for Goody to kill Crackstone. She had to curse his soul, too. Goody sealed Crackstone in his sarcophagus with a bloodlock. Only one of her direct descendants can open it. You are the key. A living descendant on the night of a blood moon. Oh, how convenient. Eugene Ottinger's mom just called frantic. Something's going on at Nevermore. The tires of all the squad cars have been slashed. All right, I'm on my way. There you go. Uh, you know what? Yes, take Xavier back to Nevermore. Perfect. I didn't think resurrecting Joseph Crackstone was the way this was going to go. I really didn't. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Great. Look at Adams. You haunt me still. You will suffer the same fate you bequeathed me. Oh! Oh! Now burn in the eternal fires of hell. Mm. <laughs> That's not how I saw this going. I didn't see it going this way at all, but... <gasps> like, uh, I feel like she could ha handle a stabbing. I can't believe you're in a secret society and you didn't tell me. It's a secret. Because, you know, it's a secret. <laughs> we have to get everyone in the school to safety before it's too late. Because this is what's coming. We don't want to cause a panic and alert Tyler or Thornhill. So how do we get everyone out? Siren song. We'll use our siren song to convince him. Okay. Nightshades forever. Seriously? A secret snap too? Is it thing new? <laughs> You're here to take me to the other side. Listen, Crackstone must be stabbed through his black heart. It is the only way he will be vanquished now and forever. Is your spectral vision impaired? I'm dying. Your necklace. It is a powerful talisman. My mother told me it's for conjuring visions. It is also a conduit for conjuring spirits. Oh. It will allow me to pass through you and heal you. Just know, once I do, you will never see me again. Well, that's awfully convenient. How does the sheriff not know about his son? Are you tracking your little monster? You shut it. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Danger is on its way. No time to delay. Follow me. Come on, faster. So grateful for her. Oh god. Is she wolfing out? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! It's happening! I think I'm wolfing out! <laughs> Never been so excited in my life! Well, that's not true, but like, I'm so excited for Enid. Oh. Can Enid fight a hide? Like a cockroach. Please, flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> this will not end well for you. <laughs> really is cool looking. <laughs> oh, Enid! What a time to wolf out, girl. Outrageously happy about this. It's so weird. Thing? 
<laughs> does he have keys? How does he get in? Can he use... I mean, I guess he picks locks, but like, does he have anything he can pick it with? Oh, this is such a glorious fight. Enid, you are amazing. No, don't you hurt that. Does the sheriff know? Tyler, the sun is over you. Where's Ajax? We need him to turn him to stone. Like, immediately. the infamous sword. Why not? You got this, girl. How canst thy heart still beat? What demon sorcery is this? Stay away from her! <sighs> oh, God, Xavier. <laughs> she just took an arrow for her friend. She's a fencer. I don't know if she can wield that sword the way she does a fencing sword, but... I love it. Shoot. I will send you back to hell. <gasps> Who? Who? Yes! Black heart. Bye. Look at these two. Oh God, really? Really Laurel? You brought a gun to a sword fight. Probably the first smart decision you've made today. <laughs> I might not get to kill all the outcasts, but at least I'll get to kill you, Wednesday. Mm -mm. Good job, Eugene. Good job. You're gonna shoot it, beast? Another reason to save the beast. Yeah, that's what you get from wrestling with Nevermore. You can control them like that. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Maybe we should call the sheriff. Turn around, Eugene. Ooh! And she wears some serious shoes in this show. Aww. I'm so happy for her. Where's Wednesday? So happy. They're happy tears. I don't have any Kleenex. Ugh. Hey, Lurch. Still expelled her at the end of the school year. Did she get to stay? <laughs> I hope not. She believed you in the end. She went with you to approach Thornhill. I hate to admit, but I am gonna miss Principal Weems. She could be a real pain. But she was tough, and she died for the one thing she truly loved, this school. For that, I have immense respect. She was one of us. R.I.P.
Now that classes are canceled for the rest of the semester, you have oh. to come visit me in San Francisco. I can pretty much guarantee fog and drizzle every day. Sounds tempting. <laughs> Bianca, I owe you a thank you. That fence and title next year. So don't let killing one supernatural pilgrim get to your head. <laughs> Big apologies needed. Listen, when I was in this cell, I said a lot of things. Being your friend should come with a warning label, but I don't know a lot of people who would take an arrow for me, so... Welcome to the 21st century, Adams. <laughs> it's a cell phone. <laughs> Ew. My number's in there already. That's a bold move. <laughs> hey, are you gonna be back next semester? Yes, no, maybe. If they could just stay, like, friends and no, like, relationship, that'd be great. Like, she doesn't need to be getting into a romance. Oh, no. What is this gonna say? My very first stalker. Maybe this forced vacation will be more interesting than I imagined. Hehehehe. <laughs> Secrets are still lurking in the dark corners of Jericho. Will today's stalker become tomorrow's nemesis? Uh. I know the suspense is killing you. Ah, and it's going to continue killing me. <sighs> she got that hug. She got that hug. Oh my god. Oh my, did I think Joseph Crackstone was going to come back? I mean, obviously he had to to face her in the courtyard, but I, I kind of just pictured it being a modern day person that was related to Crackstone, like, like Laurel, but like a male. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know really how I thought that was going to go down. They obviously wrote it much better. Although I don't like the convenience of Goody being able to go into Wednesday through her, her pendant and as a conduit, and then, like, healing her. That's a little too convenient for me. Mm. I just... Mm. A little too convenient. But I'll, I'll, I'll let it slide because of how well-written the majority of the show is, uh, how well-written a lot of these characters are. And can I just tell you, and I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't look up, like, the actors or anybody, but uh, whoever played Tyler, the fact that he was, like, so, like, like puppy love struck, like... Um, kind of frustrated sometimes and sometimes just like a regular boy, but like he didn't seem very like three dimensional until this episode. Well, the last episode in this episode, like the acting has been on point. I guess the last episode was because he was like being very romantic towards Wednesday. And then in this one, when he's talking to her and you see that change when he's like, like kind of being like, 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 you know, like sad emotional Tyler and then when he gets closer he is very much not sad emotional Tyler and then he's able to go right back to that superb acting superb he did such a great job such a great job damn <sighs> I'm all smiles after this I mean honestly like I figured Enid would wolf out under the blood moon that would be the the only explanation as to why when she's kissing Ajax that like her claws come out like she wasn't like overwhelmingly excited about anything. Um, and, and I, oh man, I love that she fought Tyler. I love that. And that hug and that hug, that beautiful, beautiful hug. Oh my God. I am so happy for for Enid that she, not necessarily that she did be the thing that her mother wanted her to do, but that the thing that she wanted to do. You know, she wanted to be part of the pack. She wanted to wolf out. She wanted to be included in that. She wanted to kind of, you know, follow her destiny, which, you know, if, if both of her parents are in a pack, that, like, she would hopefully want to be part of that pack as well. Um, and that was just so perfect. And I love when she stood up. She had the purple hair, and you could tell that it was Enid. That made this episode for me. Like, so many things happened that were just amazing. Like, Weems actually, you know, after 
she said like if you had come to me and then like Wednesday's like we're always at odds you wouldn't have believed me and then she didn't believe her and then I was like well that's why she didn't come to you is because you never want to believe her but then she believed her enough that after you know Wednesday goes to the hospital to see Eugene that like you know she obviously talked to Weems and said it's Thornhill and and this is why and then she pretended to be Tyler and like I'm so upset that Gwendolyn Christie isn't going to be back next season. Oh, she's so good. But that just means that they got to get somebody even better to play the principal. Not even, not better, adjacent. Because I, I think she did such a superb job. Oh my God, she was so amazing. I loved it. I loved it. Now, I figured that like with Tyler's mother that she would have to be a hide, but I didn't realize that she actually went to Nevermore. Um, that, that's pretty amazing that that was, uh, included in there and that she was an outcast and that the sheriff had fallen in love with an outcast. What did it say that she died of postpartum depression? So it's like Tyler didn't have her around for very long, I guess. Um, I mean, a boy needs his mother. He really does. He needs to have the the more emotional loving side of his mother if the father can't provide it and it doesn't look like his father could. I feel bad for the sheriff. Like, I mean, obviously he knew it was Tyler. I feel like he knew the whole time that it was Tyler, but he was just hoping that it wasn't Tyler. And then when, you know, he saw the monster, he knew that it was Tyler. It's hilarious because kind of from the beginning, I thought I was like, oh, Tyler or Thornhill, they're, they're, they're the monster. And then, uh, nope. <laughs> Laurel and the monster, yes. Yeah, the, absolutely, after that first episode, I was like, Tyler's sus. And it didn't occur to me until I went to, like, watch this episode that he bumped into her at the dance. And, like, because I was trying to think of who she bumped into the dance to have the the vision of Eugene, and obviously it was him. She was the one that she, he, he was the one that she was in close proximity to. All coming together now. All coming together now. I love that Bianca was clutching this, not only helping the students get out, but also, you know, <laughs> she took a stab at Crackstone. I love that. See, I love that the, the relationships that were built in this weren't your typical, you know, catty high school relationships that were in, you know, every teenage, you know, movie growing up, for, for me at least, that there was always like the, 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 the snob or the queen bee that never liked the person that was kind of like weird and quirky. I love that like that was not the case. I love that. I love that. Break all of those those norms and shift that stuff right into this direction. I love that. Um, I, I hope that there's not a love connection with Xavier. I mean, I know that like they're at least friends and like he even said like being friends with you should come with a warning label. 100%. Um, I could only imagine being a boyfriend. <laughs> you have to have a death wish. Um, but uh, I, I really liked that uh, he kind of forgave her. She did take an arrow for him. I mean, she took an arrow for a friend. And and she, she finally gave Enid that hug. And they kind of had that moment when she was packing up her room where Enid, like, looks like she's talking to the taxidermied squirrel. But she is actually talking to Wednesday. And, you know, Wednesday is as open and kind and nice as she can be, as much as her her, her normal sensibilities will allow her to be. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think next season we're going to see Enid in the Secret Society, because there's no way she's not going to be in that Secret Society now. Uh, especially learning that they have a snap and Thing knew it. The fact that Thing knew the snap. It's crazy. Thing is, like, so instrumental in so many things happening in this show. Like, Xavier getting out of the car. Like, you know, th there's just, th there's so many things the Thing is responsible for. Clutch. He comes in clutch. So, obviously, now Wednesday has a stalker. Shocker. Uh, she's probably a, a celebrity now at Nevermore for saving the school. Um, I, I, I don't doubt that, um... I feel like the stalker might not be the central focus of next season. I feel like it's something that she will have solved by the time she got there and then it's done and over with. I, I don't feel like that's something she's going to waste her time on, but I do feel like something else that's supernatural will probably present itself. Oh my gosh, this show is so good. And I found out that Jenna Ortega said that she spent a year in Las Vegas so she could like really like get down and dark. And I live in Las Vegas. 
and where some of that I would say is very much true, it's also a very delightful place. I'm sure in that year she had some fun. She had to have. Like, there's a lot of good things about Las Vegas, Jenna. I would name them, but I can't think of any offhand. <laughs> sunshine. Lots of sunshine that will sear your skin. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go, there you go. Mountains. There's mountains. Um, uh, there's a, 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 a lake that there's bodies in. Wait, mm, maybe that explains the darkness that she found while she was here. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to see the full-length reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon. I would say up to one episode early, but there are no more episodes. I'm so bummed, but you can find other uh, episodes of other shows uh, on my channel. Uh, the Expanse, House of the Dragon, Vox Machina, uh, soon there'll be Severance, Andor, The Bad Batch, The Last of Us. Oh my. I'm going to be busy. So busy. Trying to get at least one or two movies out a month as well, which is uh, proving to be a little bit hard. Glass Onion will be up uh, pretty soon. I'd love to give you guys an exact time and day, but I don't have one. Uh, it might be up before this even airs, so we'll find out. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, get notifications for my channel so when I post more content, you can come back here and you can watch it. Maybe there will be other fun, zany, crazy things that come out that we can watch together. Um, believe me, I, I, I cry a lot. I laugh a lot. I have a quirky sense of humor. I'm pretty dark myself, but at the same time, I love a good fart joke. Like I, I, I have varying degrees of who I am and things that I enjoy as well as you. I'm absolutely sure of it. If you loved this show, we besties. <laughs> and with that being said, it has been a pleasure, but I'll see ya.